Wait, no. Go ahead. So say yeah, next. so the three lines on one of the interesting projects that I've done is it, um, building life skills um, uh, in the space of adolescent <clears throat> reproductive and sexual health uh, in school uh, students, in the uh, adolescents of schools through the teacher training. So we did it through United Nations Population Fund. They had the funds for it and they had sponsored some schools. They, they told us what profiles of schools to take. So that's the three lines. Brilliant. Super. Thank you very much, Padma. And everybody just say your name as you start. Okay. Uh, that would be good because we're going to record this also. Okay. Go ahead. Who wants to go next? Yeah. I'm Upma. And one of my recent projects, I give training to 150 people of visual merchandising. That is designing space in a store, how the store should look. So I trained them and for Reliance, over 2,000 stores are there. So that's one of my uh, projects on design aesthetics and styling. Fantastic. We're going to pause for a second and we'll welcome our new guest here. Robin, welcome. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Hi, Robin. Hi. So, uh, so, uh, Robin yeah. Uh, Nice to meet you. So can I ask a couple quick questions? Uh, yeah. Or do you want me to just brief you what we're doing here? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I know I invited you from the OpenAI group. And uh, so this is a community that we are trying to build. Uh, we call them community of change makers, which is consultants, trainers, and coaches who work with organizations. It could be for profit, not for profit government, any form of organization, but it works with organizations. And uh, this is kind of the starting stage of this whole community. And we are trying to build a uh, community which really empowers each other. And uh, two, two intentions, one is to create organizations as a force for good. And second is that every uh, consultant, trainer, coach experiences being supported by the community. So they are not alone. And uh, of course, you would have received a write-up which has more explanation of this, but I just gave you a brief. Now you can ask your questions. That's the brilliant start. Um, brilliant start. That's all I needed to know. I'm going to just sort of be a fly on the wall to see, and um, I'd love to meet everybody and connect on LinkedIn, and yes. I'll be quiet now. Thanks. <laughs> brilliant. So what, uh, what we're going to do is... We're going to send you the LinkedIn group uh, page. So you can join in there. And we have put our profiles there. You can also share your profile there. And then people will connect with you. And that's how we will build. And now we have one more colleague from the OpenAI group joining in. So David, welcome. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Thank you. How are you? Okay, so David is also part of the Open AI group uh, where I am participating, and uh, this uh, this idea of community was also inspired by the EXO principles, uh, which is in the background of what we are doing in Open AI. And David is also uh, so we'll give you a chance, David and Robin. What we are doing today is we are giving everybody a chance to share about one of their interesting projects in three lines okay so david i'll just update you uh, what we are doing here we are trying to create a community of change makers which is consultants trainers and coaches who are working in the organizational space organization including all forms of organization yeah uh, not for profit profit health education government everything uh, but not uh, people who are working in the personal space but people who are working in the organizational space and uh, the commitment is to, one is create businesses as a force for good on the planet. And second is each change maker experiencing being fully supported by the community. So we say, don't be alone, be the community. And uh, you would have received the uh, write up uh, about this and we will discuss more. You'll also be invited into the LinkedIn group if you want to join. 
So any questions, David? No. Okay. And we are also looking to form, a, see this is evolving, but right now what we are looking to do is we are having this uh, one hour meetings every Tuesday, this same time. And one week we are doing more of connecting and collaborating. And the other week we'll focus more on learning and knowledge sharing. Okay. Now today what we are doing is an experiment where each one of us introduces one of our projects in three lines. Okay. So you can listen in, have one or two people share, and then you can also jump in. Thank you. Okay, so who's next? I can go next. Yes, Mohit, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm Mohit Miglani. I'm primarily a business consultant into marketing and sales growth. My last project was for education area startup, targeting school uh, children of grade 12. Uh, I devised a B2B and B2C strategy to get them a good start into 15,000 schools, 12,000 schools and 500,000, which is 5 lakh kids, students. All right. And okay. I, my primary uh, area, my primary um, uh, achievement there was I designed uh, micro funnels and each micro funnel had series of micro wins to get this uh, going for their uh, revenue stream. Fantastic. And uh, uh, Mohit, can you just, for my clarity, can you just say one more line about what was the uh, product or service there? Was it a school or? Yeah. What, what competitive, uh, mock exams for uh, competitive uh, university entrance. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very you much. may have heard of uh, uh, CUET exam. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, yes, Radha Krishnan. And then Mohab. Yes, yes, I'm Radha Krishnan calling from, I'm from Chennai, India. And uh, I've been doing a project on competency dictionary creation for uh, the green energy projects like wind and solar. Okay. This is my project right now. I'm doing it almost completed. So I thought I will just tell about this. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, Mohak. So good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Mohak Mehta and I am an executive coach based in Ahmedabad, Gujarat in India. Uh, one of the projects that we are working on right now is with, uh, is with an engineering company and uh, they are into the uh, fabrication of machine cutting tools. And now from machine cutting tools, they are setting up an entirely new facility for manufacturing of uh, specialized equipment for drilling, which is, uh, and the parts that they are uh, expected to manufacture, that they are on the roadmap to manufacture. They are the parts which are exclusively uh, ex uh, imported right now. So, and the promoter has a, it's a tremendous vision of decreasing uh, India's reliance on imports. So that is one of the projects that I'm working on. And like, you know, Great. Fantastic. To be yeah. Perfect, Mark. Thank you very much. And by the way, all of you, uh, this, all these projects, I hope you're going to share more about it on the LinkedIn group. Okay. Great. Uh, who wants to go? Nilesh? Yeah. Uh, I'm working on an ego to eco thinking moment project right now. And we had um, more than 100 plus seminar till today in last 2023 year. Like uh, we, we deliver 100 plus seminars and we touch more than 10,000 plus lives and a lot of corporate companies. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, Robin, you want to take a shot? Okay, here goes. Uh, let's see, so I'm uh, Dr. Robin Rice. I live uh, in LA, although right now I'm in uh, United States. Not right now I'm on the East Coast. And my project, I'll start with, do you all talk about massive transformative projects? Oh, sure. Okay, uh, so my- But you can go ahead and use that term, no problem. Okay, so my MTP, 
um, for is healing our global village one woman at a time. The Moonshot Project, my legacy company is called Woman Optimized. And the goal is to create an entirely new ecosystem that simplifies how to match women um, and girls with their next ideal right step. So it's sort of like a GPS for women's lives. Uh, did I answer all the questions? How did I do? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, just for my clarification, uh, if you can say, uh, you said ideal and then two words used after ideal. Uh, matching women and girls to their ideal, what did you say after that? Next right step. So sometimes provider, okay. next some product, okay. make their lives magical. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Hey, Rajneesh, welcome. David, you want to give a shot? Sure. Uh, my name is David Prorock. I live in the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, in the United States. Um, and um, one of the projects I'm working on is called Booty AI. And the goal of this uh, platform is to use AI and human coaches to guide people on the path to enlightenment. So we've built a few tools right now um, that I've been using in like my interactions with people online. Um, and uh, yeah, and the website is B-O-O-D-I dot A-I. Okay, great. Thank you very much, uh, David. And uh, so Dave, I see David as somebody who's trying to bring mindfulness and AI together. Is that a good way to say that, David? Yeah, sure. One, one of the ways, of course. Okay, hey, Preeti Sabarwal, welcome. And Rajneesh, uh, welcome. Rajneesh, are you going to get this one? Okay, Priti, welcome to your first call of uh, the change makers here, Abundance Tribe change makers. And uh, right now, what we are doing is we are just introducing one of the projects that we have worked on in three lines. That's what we are doing here. Okay. And uh, Rajneesh, you need to unmute if you want to speak and get your video on. Okay, so I'll take a shot. And uh, since some of our colleagues talked about education. So I'll uh, share one of those projects. So I uh, started my consulting career in 1992, but I, or 94. But I, yeah, I started this, uh, I set up the first ever uh, Delhi public school in Gujarat at the age of less than 25. And uh, then I also set up the other school uh, for Zydus Kerala. So my career started with being a founder consultant for setting up these two schools. So that's my three lines. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is now go do a second round. Okay, so now you can either talk about the same project and you can go deeper into that if you want, but preferably we would like you to talk about some other project. Okay, so, but choice is yours. So once you get the mic, nobody controls it. So go ahead, who wants to start? Uh, Manoj, Preeti Rajneesh will hear from them also. Yeah, but they, I, we can't force them, no? <laughs> okay. So okay. when they are unmute and when they get the video on, we would love to hear them. But I, I have a daughter, a teenage daughter, so I have been now trained that you can't force anything, okay? That's a, that's a good learning. That's a good learning. Okay. Manu, at what age exactly does this revelation come? After they're 12 years old, then you have to become <laughs> a student. You are the student and they are the teacher. And they'll guide you how to deal with them. Priti, uh, we are just introducing ourselves and the way we are introducing is by talking about any of our project, uh, any one project. And we are sharing about that project in three lines. So mostly what you're getting to say is the title of the project and one byline, right? So three lines means very limited, uh, but that is how we are introducing ourselves right now. Okay, you can take a minute to think uh, and whenever you're ready, just unmute and speak. Project but means, I'm still not getting, sorry. Project means, means something you've worked on. 
yes Re regarding yeah. your yeah whatever you have done in your uh, professional life as a consultant and a trainer and a coach like that so this is mm -hmm. the community of okay, consultants fine. trainers and coach so anything that you have worked on as a consultant or a trainer or a coach that you want to share with us mm -hmm. in three lines mm -hmm. okay, okay. Uh, and uh, it would be good if you can get your video on thank you okay so second round who's starting but my go ahead thank you Yeah, this is Padma from Hyderabad. So the other project that I was really, my heart is very close to is uh, integrating vocational education into the curricular aspects, uh, school curricular aspects and uh, um, uh, building uh, uh, teacher uh, teacher education, that is the B.Ed. and M.Ed. faculty, building capacities in the B.Ed. and M.Ed. faculty and parallelly working with the in-service teachers as well to inculcate uh, uh, vocational skills from maybe grade 6 to grade 10, grade 12 into the curricular aspects, so into math, science, social and uh, language. That is, that's been very close and very recently I've done it as a part of the National Education Policy 2020. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Definitely looking forward to more sharing on this also. Wow, on... wow. It's amazing. I'll personally call you to know more about this. Yeah, this is, uh, I'll, I'll tell you in, the, in detail what it is. Very interesting, yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. I do uh, another of my areas of work is I give trainings uh, or you would say take sessions on dressing up. So how should a person dress up according to their height, their skin tone, their body shape. So uh, I take this for anyone. I have taken it for lawyers, for CEOs, for normal human beings, you know, women, men from various walks of life. So I take those uh, trainings. It's a day session. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, who wants to go next? Just unmute and jump. Okay. So I'll I'll go. Yes. Um. So areas of focus for me right now are solving the big problems of how do we help people know who they are. So I'm a clinical psychologist with a neuroscience background. Um, and one of the things that seems to be true, not seems to be true, is true. People think they know who they are. And when they're acting on who they think they are, they're often wrong, right? So the goal is how do we solve the question of who people really are, what's really motivating, what are some of the immunity to change things they have, beliefs they have under the surface that impact their ability for success. So we're looking to develop an AI that helps people to identify who they are really to get to who they think, from who they think they are to who they really are to where they really wanna be. So that's an AI project we're working on or I'd like to be working on. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That's interesting. Okay. Can, Can I share? Yes, please. Yeah. go ahead. Yes. So I aspire to become one of the greatest contributors on executive presence on this planet. Talk about your past and, project, okay? Yeah. So this is the book that I released in this year, which is an yeah. inside out approach to executive presence. Nobody's talking about this. I have read more than 20 books myself and gone through many programs, but nobody is talking about now how from inner radiance you can start showing your executive presence as outer brilliance. So I think I have contributed uh, with this book and I launched a program in Ludhiana for a company the base, on the basis of this book. Okay, super. Yeah. Thank you very much. And do share about this on the LinkedIn group. We will send you the yeah. link for that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Perfect. Okay, who's going next? Okay. I wasn't expecting that I would have to... Why are it. men so shy? All the women have spoken up. Come on, guys. <laughs> who's going to eat you up, huh? Come on. They're all scared of you, Upma. <laughs> Right. Mohit, go ahead. No, I Don't did worry. already. 
Yeah, this is the second round now. Oh, then I'm sorry, I missed the question. What else? Same thing. We are in another project we are talking about. Three lines on another project. Okay, so you can think yeah. in the main file. Uh, so I'll share about a current project. Uh, so recently we have collaborated with the Ahmedabad Management Association and have started a platform called CEO Forum. And we are doing uh, special workshops with them which are dedicated for the top management. And the focus is creating future ready organizations and creating organizations where people can bring their head, heart, and soul. So that's what we are doing currently. Thank you. Okay, somebody else want to jump in now? Mohak and then Mohit. So uh, one another project that is very close to my heart that I am working on right now is with a pediatric hospital in Ahmedabad. So they are a chain of hospitals and it took us a long time uh, to formulate a vision but the game that they have taken on is to have affordable healthcare available to every child in India affordable healthcare so add to that and they already have four branches and uh, there is a roadmap but I am really thrilled and excited to be working with people who are committed to something that is bigger than their own self and yeah. it reflects in their day to day actions so uh, the whole process in which and you know i would like to say that you know i participated and i have had the opportunity of working with you manoj and uh, that whole the mindset shift of bringing the higher self to work every day so uh, there might be different technologies that achieve the same goal ultimately but when people come from uh, you know being in service of something that is bigger than who they are you know that's when they are like uh, lit up by their experience of themselves and who they are. And that's when I really love working with them. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mohak, you have to learn to speak in three lines. Right. <laughs> Got otherwise, that. otherwise, we'll send you to politics. <laughs> okay, I will take injunctions from now on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mohit, did you want to share? Yeah. So yeah. line one. This was a project for a listed company about $30 million into artificial leather manufacturing, seven product lines. Wow. Line two, I was supposed to do a marketing a strategy for them for their B2B expand and optimize. Line three, <laughs> <laughs> I, I found a lot of gaps and handed it over to uh, Nilesh ji for first increasing their uh, capacity helping them with their vestiges and lean uh, coaching, lean training. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Nilesh, do you want to go next since he's already yeah. talked about Yeah. Thank you. So uh, my second project, uh, which I'm working on it is, uh, I'm, uh, I created a collaboration with two associations, ISA and Masia. It's a industrial association where they are Collectively, they are creating customers for me. So they are giving me customers at one stroke, like a 300 customer, 500 customer. That kind of collaboration we are doing for the lean cluster. Okay, for lean management. Okay, got that. Thank you very much. David, you want to give a shot? Yeah, so another project, I guess you would call it, is um, offering uh, meditation coaching. Um, to individuals so I um, and uh, one way that I do that is using um, a custom GPT that I created called rain a practice of radical compassion and so you can use this AI while you're on a call with somebody and it guides you through a process of recognizing your emotions allowing them to be there investigating them and nurturing so as the coach, I read basically, I basically just read what the AI says and then guide them in a meditation at the end. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay, Rajneesh, are you going to be available on this call or are you going to just listen? Are you there, Rajneesh? Okay. Hey. It's sad that uh, you couldn't get Rajneesh. He's been... We had a call and he's doing some interesting work. 
I would have allowed him to share. Okay, Radha Krishnan, go ahead. Yes, well, I am telling about the project which I've done earlier. Uh, that is yeah. the construction of two into 500 megawatt uh, thermal power plant in uh, uh, near Visakhapatnam. Okay. okay. From scratch, from the plain ground to commissioning and commercialization of the project is what I've done. I led the project totally. Okay, brilliant. Super. Okay, so uh, again, my request, please put lock further details on your projects on the LinkedIn group because these are all really interesting projects, right? And we would love to hear more about them. Okay, Priti, do you want to go for the second round? Yes. Go ahead. So another thing which I'm working on, I want to create one of the top three coaching workshops, coaching skills workshops in India. And I'm launching this at Le Meridian Amritsar on 31st January. The okay. shift that you can bring through coaching conversations, various tools and methods that I am uh, putting there in that workshop. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks. Hey, Rajnish, good you could join back. Can you hear me now? Okay. Seems your network is not going to be friendly with you today. Okay, so we'll pause here. And what I would like to do is to invest uh, some of the uh, balance time in looking at our uh, sales and business development conversations. Many of you have in the form liked, uh, have mentioned that you would like to get more training and build more competency in the area of sales, business development, and being able to build your whole practice. Okay. So is that okay if we spend some time around talking about sales? Okay. So uh, I have been uh, trained in a process called consultative selling. Some of you may have heard of it. And one of the methods that I've been trained in is in the top five uh, methods of selling. Uh, so there are many aspects of it. When we train companies, it takes like a one year to train. Okay. So what we are going to do is in all these sessions, we will bring in some snippets and then maybe at some time we will also do a extra masterclass. So let's start with... Uh, so what are the common mistakes that people make when they are promoting their products and services? Somebody wants to guess what is the most common mistake? Maybe pitch something that's not required by the organization. Okay, very good. There's no match between requirement and offering. Okay, fantastic. Uh -huh. They don't listen. They don't so speak, uh, yes. Speaking a lot, being the salesperson. Yeah. yeah. Good. So consider that that is one of the most common mistakes. Not understanding the requirement. Yeah. But uh, so that's true, not understanding. But what Mohak said, I want to just underline the biggest mistake and the most common mistake is salesperson. Right? And I mean it in the fullest respect. Uh, speak a lot. Second is they speak about themselves. Third is they speak about their production services. And by the time they complete their script, the customer has mentally already gone to some other meeting. Right. So, so first thing is to realize that the customer is not interested in you. Mm -hmm. And the customer is not interested in what you have to offer. Whatever you have to offer, the customer is not interested in that. Whatever you have to offer, customer is not interested in that. Even if you are giving them gold and diamonds and whatever else, they're not interested in that. Like really, we have to get this in our DNA. Okay, so let me make it simpler for you, right? So somebody tell me, what is the last uh, purchase that you did, which was like a significant purchase for you? It was not like 
casual thing, but it was something significant. It doesn't have to be very big. Tell me, one, any one of you. What is the last thing you purchased? My car. Mohawk, what did you say? My car. Car, okay. Somebody else said something? Fridge, fridge. Fridge, okay, good. So let's ask both of you, right? So which company fridge you bought? Whirlpool. Whirlpool, okay. And which car did you buy? Uh, it's Nexon EV. Nexon, Tata. Yes. Right. So do you have shares of Tata and do you have shares of uh, Whirlpool? No, <laughs> I don't have shares of Whirlpool. All right. Do you know the CEO? No. <laughs> do you know how many days they spent in designing this car or this fridge? No. <laughs> do you have any love for Tata or uh, Whirlpool? Uh, <clears throat> just wanted a change of brand, so I bought a different brand, that's all. Coincidentally, uh, I, I know it's rather unusual, but my answer to all of those questions is yes. Uh, and yeah. and still, I am even invested got, in Tata Motors. Yeah, and still it has got nothing to do with your buying the car. Yes. So what I'm saying is that, what are you really buying? Right? So let's look at what did you really buy? So, Padma, what did you really buy? A, co a cooling device. <laughs> That's yeah. it. You, buy, you bought a facility to keep your... What vegetables and some uh, some other food. stuff safe yeah, food, food safe food. yeah so you bought that right uh, whether uh, <clears throat> that's what you bought right not uh, like somebody else could buy oh I bought a refrigerator because that would look good in my house right no I didn't go for now, that basically yeah. there's a lot of power usage with my old fridge which is what yeah. I realized after I bought the new fridge. <laughs> So you bought uh, you bought uh, efficiency, right? You you bought power efficiency. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good. And uh, what did you buy, uh, Mohak? The ability to travel comfortably and affordably. Yeah. Now it could be the car. It could be something else. It would it doesn't even have to forget uh, which brand. It can be even a different product altogether. That can serve your need. Can you get True. that? So, uh, we say, uh, in this game, we say, you don't know what you are selling till the time you find out what they are buying. True. Now, for that, we need to get into their world. We need to get into the customer's world. Hey, show them welcome. How do you get into the customer's world? Hi, Manoj. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. So, question for everybody. How do you get into the customer's world? Listening. So, you... Engage in... Engage in... Engage in... Their business is... And then you listen to them, their pain points. Or... I mean, wh why is it that they, they are looking? Wh why do they want to procure what they want to procure? Okay. Good. They get, listen to the pain points. Okay. Somebody else? I'll How just do you, say, you, yeah, you, need to, you need to know the problem they're trying to solve. Yeah. You need to know the problem that they are trying to solve. And how do you get to do that? You listen to their, so, uh, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. go ahead, Robin. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Robin. Yeah, you explore and listen to what the client or the, the company, uh, what they're trying to achieve. So it's, a, okay. it's an exploration uncovering process. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Padma, you were saying something? Probing questions. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's good. So one thing is that you need to listen. Right? Most of us agree that we need to listen more. 
but for us to listen, somebody needs to speak. How would we listen if they don't speak, right? So then how do you get them to speak? Asking the appropriate questions, you know, questions that interest them, okay. where they are coming from, you know. Yeah. So they speak, then they speak, you know. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Somebody else? How do you get them to speak? Mark? So, uh, by being powerfully related with them, by really being connected with them. Okay, good. Thank you. Somebody else? Ask them their pain areas, what has been troubling them, where they lost money recently, what plans have failed for them, what has worked for them well. Yeah, good. So uh, most of you are kind of coming towards that one is you have to ask questions, right? And second is to build a rapport. So in this consultative selling model that we are working on, uh, it's a very old established model so, and that's called uh, spin selling, S-P-I-N, okay? And uh, very famous and a uh, lot of people know about it, very few people use it right? because it's not easy to use, right? And uh, it requires a lot of homework. Okay, so the spin selling is basically four words, right? S P I N. And this was created by Neil Rackham. And uh, <clears throat> you can get this book also, Spin Selling. And this, there is a book called Spin Selling Field Book. I would, if you uh, like to read, I would strongly recommend these two books. Uh, we use those books even in the workshops that we do. So this, there are four types of question, okay? So first question is S, S means situational questions, or you can say background questions. The second is problem questions, like some of you were talking about it, right? So problem questions. Third is called implication questions. So the good or bad thing about problems is, problems never come alone. Every problem comes with a cascading effect. You take any problem and you will see it has a cascading effect on multiple other areas. Suppose a company has a cash flow problem, you will see it has an impact on many other issues. You'll see, oh, it's a uh, employee retention problem, it has a cascading effect on many other issues. If it has a sales problem, there's a cascading effect. So every problem has a cascading effect. And that cascading effect is called the implication of the problem, okay? And then the fourth aspect, N, is called the need payoff or a benefit. Basically, it's about benefit. If this problem was solved, what would be the benefit? Really? Okay. Now, uh, we will go into it a little deeper, but I just repeat. Uh, S is situational or background questions. P is for problem questions. I is for implication questions, which is the cascading effect of the problem. And N is the need payoff question or the benefit question. Okay, so let's just park this for a minute and I'll come back to another question for all of you. Who do you think is the best salesman? As a, like which profession you would consider as the best salespeople? Doctor. I would say insurance. Insurance, okay. Right. Somebody else? Doctor, doctor. Doctor, okay. Somebody else? I agree with Upma, insurance, mutual funds. Okay. Yeah, right. When you don't need, they sell. <laughs> I mean, at yeah. least you feel you don't need. Yeah. Use yeah, okay. the cards. Right. We are here going to go with Nilesh's answer. We are saying doctors. And why doctors? is because nobody thinks of them as salespeople. That's the best qualification. If you are the greatest salesperson when nobody thinks of you as a salesperson. <laughs> yeah. 
Because if they think of you as a salesperson, they are you're already creating resistance, right? Now, good thing about a doctor if you, is we can, we all of us have experience with them. So you can learn some of it, right? So imagine you go to a doctor, your family physician or anybody, right? And just as you walk into their clinic, they look up to you and they give you medicine. Will that work for you? No. No. What does the doctor do? What he does listen. the doctor do? No. Yeah, he asks you a question, right? And he listens to you and he will ask some further probing questions and he will do his analysis. And sometimes they, he or she uh, would uh, ask you to conduct, uh, go through some tests and some reports to be generated and stuff like that. Basically, they ask questions and they go deeper into the problem, understand the problem. If required, they will do tests to understand it. Uh, but no doctor worth their salt is going to give you medicine without doing any of this. Right? And if they start doing that, right, mostly you will say, no, then I will go to the pharmacist directly. Right? And why do I need to take go to the doctor then? So what we want to encourage all of us uh, to do is to look at ourselves as doctors. Whether you are a consultant or a trainer or coach, you are also some form, you can look at yourself as a doctor. You are there to go to the root of the issue and help them solve the issue. And more importantly, what I'm talking here about is you have to build that kind of credibility. And why is that credibility required? So let's say, if a salesman comes to you and starts asking you question, one question, second question, third question, fourth question, what will you do? You will find something. You get irritated and throw him out. How does yeah. it... Yeah, you, you, somehow you will get an exit strategy, right? Whether it's polite or not polite, you will somehow find an exit strategy. But if your yeah. doctor asks you four questions, have you ever got upset? No. Do you ever complain that my doctor asked too many questions? Never. Because that's the credibility. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, in our field, unfortunately, more, many of us have to deal with that overall as a profession, people, not everybody. So there is no guaranteed credibility, like a doctor will get an inherent credibility because he's a doctor, he or she is a doctor, right? But if you say, I am a consultant, that doesn't necessarily get you the same credibility. So you have to build your credibility. Are you with me? Yeah. And you have to earn your right to ask questions. You have, earned, you have to earn your right to get into the world of the customer. Okay, so let me pause here and Padma, you have a hand up, you have a question or a comment? I just have a thought actually, it's not yeah, a comment. Right. It's uh, uh, my understanding or my experience in life has told me that in any situation, a family will spend on health, education, and food. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they will cut out on everything else when they don't have money or when there's an issue. Like if you look at the COVID uh, pandemic also, the food, uh, uh, the schools were running online. You know, you, they suddenly took up online classes and education was happening. So no, they didn't want to cut out on educate. The, 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 even the underprivileged got mobile phones and somehow managed uh, smart classes for their kids. And uh, doctors, of course. So I think the doctor's sales is much easier because you go to them with a need, a pressing need that needs to be solved. Um, and I, in every other field, it's much more difficult. <laughs> the, the sales is much more difficult. <laughs> yeah. So you have to step out of a doctor's clinic with a solution for sure. Can I respond to Padma? Yeah. Right. So what I'm saying, Padma, is actually two things. Right. I mean, if you if you look at, I mean, you you've actually raised a very interesting point. So the thing is, one, the problem 
is perceived to be very serious that needs immediate attention by the by the customer right the second is ki then the person looks around who are the credible people in my neighborhood or people i know and then reaches out to them for the treatment so i agree with you and i have seen as a consultant that a lot of the time people also do not even understand that they have a problem right but then those are the people who can't even be called customers because if you go by the uh, uh, marketing uh, 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 if you go by the marketing textbooks, customer is a person who has a need and who is out in the market looking for uh, fulfillment of the need and has the money to pay for it. See, if I have a need and I do not have money, then I'm not a customer. If I don't even know if I'm aware of the problem, even then I'm not a customer. Right. <clears throat> And yeah, most of there's also something, uh, there's also something called into the trap. Yeah. So, I was trying to say is most of the time, uh, we consultants end up actually proving to our clients that look, you have a problem because we see a problem, but unfortunately, they do not see it. Right. Got that. So, uh, <laughs> That's what we want to learn, Rajnish, is how do we actually build the awareness and how do we create the, uh, the awareness for people to see the challenges and see the opportunity, not only the challenges, but also the opportunities, right? So we, people are going to buy for two reasons. One is to deal with a pain area or to deal with a, to encash an opportunity. So it can be either ways, right? Uh, okay, so before we go ahead, Questions about whatever we discussed so far. Is it that we have to create a situation like patient, doctor patient relationship? It is very simple to, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the rapid can be built very easily because the patient is going there. Yeah, but so also. Can you, can, you take a parallel, can you take a parallel in this, in the sales? I think uh, I would say. Uh, you have to be a domain expert. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, see, why, uh, while the while we are saying that the patient trusts the doctor, let's not forget that the doctor has done something to earn that trust. Mm -hmm. They have gone through five years, seven years, nine years, ten years of learning or more, and, and they, also, have, yeah. they, they have built the credibility. Okay. Right. Now, if people start complaining about a doctor's uh, competency, they are also going to get into trouble. So my take on it is what I would like to learn from a doctor or get inspired by is to build that kind of domain mastery. Actually, when you have that kind part. of domain yeah. mastery, then the, the quality, see, asking questions is easy. Asking questions that customer wants to respond is the challenge Definitely. because if you ask questions and customer doesn't like to respond to those questions they are going to bash you up and most of the sales people ask a lot of questions and they just irritate everybody because they don't ask the they don't have the substance to ask the valid question right? so what would it take for us to be able to ask a question that the customer is inspired to respond and for me, that is deep understanding of the domain that you're working in and deep understanding of the customer's industry. True. That's true. As far as domain understanding, domain, uh, I mean, that's the foundation. is concerned, it's correct. Yeah. <clears throat> I see that as the foundation for our profession. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I think, I think it's customer care. Uh, and uh, um, such service that you want to recommend them to others uh, is what we should also do. I think give them such good uh, service that they will recommend and uh, word of mouth. Uh, um, and uh, from, from uh, my experience with my dental uh, surgeon has been so good that he's upselling and cross-selling to me now. <laughs> <laughs> 
right. he's selling me cosmetic and skin care treatment also his wife does that so he's saying you should do this you should do that why don't you try it out so i'm i'm not fallen for the trap as yet but <laughs> that's how it is it gives me such good care that he's yeah. actually so making me feel that he's caring for me yeah and it isn't that trap to do the skin once you trust Sorry? him i said once you trust him it isn't a, tra- a trap anymore you trust him for other things as well yeah but not true, but i, I, I not really don't, yeah yeah i don't need the skin treatments i know that but he was and, he was just telling me you know maybe you should just go in for this you know i'll put something and all i i don't want all that thing i just want, want my teeth to be happy that's all <laughs> but if it yeah. looks like a trap to you then yeah obviously he is not a very good seller no 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 he's trying he, also he's, he trying has, and, he's not the customer no she just said she is not the customer for that i'm the customer he doesn't need my it. dental issues with him he's very sure. good with it in fact i've i've given him a review on google 500 people have seen that review and gone to him that's what he says i also got a message from google yeah yeah, yeah so, so <clears throat> if you look at uh, padma what you're saying here is he, he uh, build the credibility with you and you trust him but then he is now talking about something that you don't have the need for and the more he will talk about it the the less and less you are going to value his speaking on the new topic he, yeah but he is understood he has to back off otherwise he may lose me <laughs> that, that that's what i'm saying that is his good luck and the, that is his wisdom if he doesn't yeah. realize that then he might yeah. end up upsetting a satisfied customer correct correct and the word of mouth will also stop so yeah. i'm not going to recommend anymore yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay good so now coming back to uh, us right is there any learning for uh, any one of us here out of this discussion something that you can take on for yourself because what, what? we want to do is create this snippets which help us to develop our own uh, business development activities right so any insights for any one of you here you spoke about earning the right which i really liked okay now okay. my question to myself would be how am I, have i earned the right to ask the questions if i have okay. not how would i do that now yeah okay great thank you very much somebody else we hey, give it the opportunity for us to uh, somewhat connect each other in a better manner yeah but i'm now so that's for the whole session but i'm asking you right now from the this session that we just talked about for the last 15 20 minutes about the whole the, set yeah, don't the, oh, okay yes i mean the that's first it. thing yeah can you say again i said don't oversell okay got that thank you make a point and let it be with the customer it's like plant a seed and let it grow and then if the customer feels the need if the customer wants the service the customer would come and give you the space to ask questions okay so fine so basic point is don't oversell right no yeah. great thank you somebody else uh, my thing i will yeah nilesh yeah my takeaway is domain expert okay that's what? something really amazing being yeah. domain very good and anilash if i can take your example uh, mm. there will be two domains that you have to master as a lean consultant okay so one is the domain of lean management itself second is the domain of the client industry so for mm. example if you are doing let's say you are working with a power plant then the application of lean is going to be very different from say you're working with a uh, with a, a engineering company or with a, a chain of hospitals or with any other industry right so every industry like you go to airline every industry the application of lean will be very different with some basic principles being same but still there are a lot of nuances so each one of us i just using you as an example we need to have two domain mastery one is our own subject domain second is the client industry domain right. mm. 
Great. Thank you very much. Anything for you, Upma? I'm just taking away being present to the customer again. Okay, you know, great. The customer is, yeah. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay. Mohit, anything for you? I I do not have any specific different takeaway than what has already been mentioned. But I just want to say there is nothing like uh, overselling. This is a term used by customer only. The only thing is either wrong selling, mis-selling, right. not selling. <laughs> both both are bad. Yes. I mean, selling is never overselling. Okay. Yeah. But if the customer says that you're overselling, then the, definitely that is an, a concern, right? At times. In that case, product market fit is not there. Then it is a different thing. But if the product market fit is there, then it's just that the timing may be wrong. Okay. It or the person is not to, the customer. Or the person is the customer. Yeah, it needs to go back to the top of the funnel go to the awareness uh, stage is is not ready to make a decision that's all so it needs to be nurtured right okay you still have to stay in that customer's mind very good fantastic so we will talk about this again in the next conversation and what you're pointing out is is it uh what we call is it a big enough need right is the need big enough for you to talk further about it or, or do you still need to develop the need so there is a whole concept called developing the need right so we will talk about it in the future sessions uh, uh, thank you very much for your participation today and uh, enjoy so if you are enjoying christmas yesterday that's great and then enjoy your holidays and uh, we would like to uh, offer you a gift as the holidays and the new year gift and the new year gift that we want to offer to you is, uh, one is we are offering you a free brainstorming session. Okay, <laughs> so if you want to have a brainstorming session with any one of us, that is myself or Nilesh or Aljor, uh, he's going to be available after the first year, first of January. So if you want to have a brainstorming session about your work that you're doing, your practice, and you want to just see how you can develop further, or just you like to have a, different perspective on how you could build your practice, then you can have a call with any one of us. You can schedule it. So that's the first gift. And the second gift is we're going to invite you all to the special workshop that we are doing with AMA, which is called Creating Future Ready Organizations. And uh, if you are interested to know more about it, we'll, uh, the link is available in the LinkedIn page. Okay, so those two opportunities are there. Thank you very much. See you next Tuesday. And please look at how we can spread this community, how we can increase this um, friends here in this community. So think of that and some take some actions on that. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, Year. New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks, David, for joining in. Bye. Bye.